Hey everyone, Caleb with Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with my weekend book haul from two local estate sales. So I only hit two estate sales, uh, today at least. Uh, probably is, that's going to be the only ones I'm going to hit. I was thinking about doing others, but these are the two that I really, really wanted to do. So, uh, I'm going to go over how I picked those and all the other relevant information for this particular uh, haul for this particular weekend in uh, three more videos that I will be linking in the description. Uh, these other videos, let me just pull them up right here. So one is uh, how I picked these estate sales, uh, how picking those right ones got me $1,000. The next one is how I found the best estate sales near me because that's sort of important and something you guys might want to pay attention to. And uh, the final one is my craziest estate sale ever, which is the one that made me the most money. Uh, maybe not ever, most money ever that I made here, but it was pretty stinking high up there. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to dive right on in on what I got. So uh, right off the bat, I got about 50 books. I got them in a big old bag in a big old box right next to me. I got some pretty cool ones and I spent about $177 for those 50 books. Well, not about, I spent exactly $177 for 50 books. And that is actually a lot higher than I spend usually, but I'm actually okay with that. And the question is why? Well, those 50 books are going to make me at least $1,500. And uh, that's just the conservative side of things. I'm thinking I might be able to get over $2,000. So that's over $2,000 in one weekend. Honestly, it's not even a whole weekend. I did all of this within a couple of hours. I left the home at 9 a.m. and I got home at 2. So that's not very much time to get $2,000 potentially or on a conservative end, $1,500. So I'm really happy. However, I'm not as happy as I could be. Why is that? Well, there's an issue. So I'm just going to grab one of the issues right now. This book right here is the entire reason why I went to one of the estate sales. It's actually the only book I bought at the first estate sale. I wasn't super happy because I only was able to get one book, but this one book I'm very happy with. But what I'm not happy about is, let's hope that is showing up for you guys. I spent $50 for one book. I've never spent that much at an estate sale for one book. So that was actually a little crazy for me. I mean, I'm like, oh man, I spent $15 for one book, but there's a reason. You may not be able to sell that one book for $150 or so, you know, just no big deal there, you know, just 150 bucks, which is 10 times my money, which is pretty stinking cool. I'm sure anyone around would be happy to spend 15 and get 150. So I'm not exactly sad about that, but it was sort of, I don't know, it's sort of a harbinger for how the rest of the day was going to go because the next estate sale I went to, they charged $3 for a paperback book and they charge $6 for a hardcover. I have not paid that much for a book before, and I was actually a little bit sad to be spending that much. However, these books, as plain as this one looks, let me grab another, also looks plain. Nothing very exciting. Uh, if you are a big per book person like me, if you've been doing antique books for a while, you probably recognize sort of these colors as what you normally get out of antique books, so you might be a little more excited. But I mean, for the average person, there's nothing exciting about these. It's boring, just plain books, right? Right, but also wrong. They might look plain, but they're actually really old books. So both those books, I think, are from the 1800s. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. That's why I say I think. But most of the books I got from this particular sale were in the 1800s, uh, all the way to like the mid 1800s, all the way to, I think the newest one I bought was like 1960s, maybe. And uh, it actually all came from one guy's estate sale. I'm going to dive into that estate sale more uh, in the other videos, which I'll be, again, linking in the description. Be sure to check those out. And I hope that uh, you guys really get inspired by what I was able to do in this one weekend. Uh, I'm going to be listing all these books. So those 50 books, uh, let me just run some quick math. So I spend roughly 10 minutes for each listing, and I'm going to be selling a couple of these books as sets. So I'm probably only going to be making maybe 30 listings. So 30 listings times about... 10 minutes divided by 60 because 60 minutes in an hour. So that's about five hours of listing. So five hours plus roughly the five hours I spent to get all these books, that's 10 hours. And again, 10 hours, and I'm going to be making between $1,500 and $2,000. That's pretty good money. And uh, of course, there are fees that are involved with selling your books. Uh, you have your eBay fees, your packaging, all that sort of stuff. But uh, if you do what I talk about in my uh, whole channel, which you guys can subscribe below and check out my other things, I charge handling fees, which takes care of my packaging. 
which makes that a lot nicer, so I don't have to worry about that expense. So all I really end up spending out of my own pocket, because I'm charging handling and I'm charging shipping to my buyers, all I'm really paying out of my pocket is storage, and I'm also paying for the actual books and then the listing fees. That's it. It's not a lot of money that I'm actually spending. So this is actually going to be a whole lot of profit. Uh, roughly, I spend about $8 per book uh, in just expenses. Because I paid a whole lot more for these books, I'm going to say that my expenses on these is probably going to be about $12, which is a lot higher than usual. But because they were more expensive, I was more picky with these books. And I'm going to talk more about that in other videos. But long story short, I like to make at least $20 per book. The $20 ensures that I get a good amount of hourly wage, and it also makes sure that I am able to get a good enough profit that's worth my time to like contact buyers, do this, do that, do that. So uh, I hope that really inspires you guys. I hope that you can pick up some more books like me on your own antique book journeys. I've got some other uh, playlists for you guys to check out if you'd like to do that on going on your first book buying trip, all that sort of stuff. But uh, I think you guys might want to just start on just the other few videos in the description below or the linked video, which will be in one of these corners, plus the little subscribe thing that will tell you how to subscribe to my channel. So I hope you guys really enjoyed what I got. I uh, hope to see you in the next video and please help me save some books.